this is my MGB axle. As you can see, it's been modified a little bit. These are for bracket, well, they're brackets for the coilover conversion that I did, which is currently on that car there. So, but this is my spare axle, so I'm going to rebuild it, do the brackets properly, the same way as on the, the one that's on the car at the moment, because these were my sort of experimental ones. And then we're going to open up the diff, and then we're going to put inside it. <gasps> what I originally had was aluminium blocks which would clamp onto the axle to stop it rotating but it didn't really work very well so I had someone quickly weld a plate to stop it from rotating and it worked very well and it went round Brands Hatch racetrack like it was on rails um, but now I'm going to remove all of these redo all the brackets rebuild the diff and then it's going to go onto the MG so first thing to do is give it a bloody good clean. This is the diff now painted. Um, well, the uh, diff housing painted. Uh, the reason I didn't paint the tubes is because I need to weld and cut on those. But I wanted to paint the main diff carrier housing because it's covered in crap. And when you take the cover off, I just don't want loads of rubbish falling into it. So I thought if I just paint the surrounding area, I can redo it if I end up, well I will scratch it, but I'll redo it another time. So now I'm going to turn this around and take the diff's leaking oil or your gearbox because it smells like Fred Flintstone's ass. Hey! No one's asking you to smell it. But if I take these off I'll be able to open up the diff cover. There it comes. And there we have our differential. And here's the cover. And yeah, that stinks. Can't see how much oil was in there. I imagine it's not a lot. I think I might have drained it a couple of years ago. But there it is. And this, I need to test how much backlash it has with a dial indicator. And then undo these four bolts and it's all going to come out. Okay, so I've got a dial test indicator set up, which is this little device here. And what it will do is it will measure how much back and forth play this has. Which is called the crown wheel. So, I've already looked at it. It's basically six, six thousandths of an inch. Which is pretty good. So I'm happy with that. So, now I know it's six thou. I'm going to take it all apart and then I'll be doing something pretty weird with this axle. Okay, back at the axle. I'm going to remove both half shafts. So we've got the hub here. I've loosened off the nut. This is my spare hub. And to get this bearing out, we pop one socket on one side, a socket on the other side, and as this nut tightens, this can't go anywhere, so it pulls the bearing out. Um, unfortunately, I've, you can't do it with one hand, so I have to pause, but you just have to trust me that it works. I'll probably show you again on another day, and I've got to do the same on the other side. I've already checked the backlash of the diff, and I used Engineer's Blue, you can just about make it out there on how the teeth mesh on the gears and it's really really good and also on the back of the diff as you can see it but there is 
writing says basically it gives you the factory spec there it is 0 0.006 which is 6 thou which is the backlash that I had when I measured it yesterday so I'm happy with that so I'm going to take the half shafts out then we can extract the sensitive section okay so I've paused so you can see what's happening here the bearing is starting to come out and so I keep tightening it out. Try and do it with one hand. Yeah, it's really not working with one hand. Okay, so it's popped out. And if you look on the other side, I don't know if you can see in here, but you can't, you can just make out a teeth inside that panic gear in there. Whereas on the other side, well, just about to make it out, you can see the half shaft still in on the other side so now it's out like that that comes out it's surprisingly heavy lever out of space there it is the half shaft one more side to do Half shafts oh, nearly out. Left it in. Out that one comes. So, two half shafts. One axle. Now, you can. No, you can't. Um, right. So, next thing, undo these four, which are bearing retainers. Uh, I've already pre-loosened them, so one, two, three, and four. labeled left and right so I have to make sure wherever I place them they're placed in order now in theory they can just lift out but they quite can't so give me a minute okay so the fifth is now out. I literally just yanked it out. It was fairly tight, but a small wedge, uh, wedge, a uh, bit of leverage with a breaker bar just pulled it out. And here it is. So you can see these fall off when you put it out, so you've got to be careful. These are, I'm going to leave these on. Um, I'm not changing these. Uh, but you'll see what I'll be doing with this later on. So now it's time for a tidy up and a clean up because this garage is getting freaking messy. So yeah, back in a jiffy. Okay, so back with Diff again. Back with Diff again and you can see I've put something inside. So we've got a solid stainless steel bar running the entire length of the axle. And inside there's a sleeve on that one and there's one on the other side. Now when you weld an axle these tubes they bend up they bend in the direction of the weld so I've got welds on this side and here and what's happened is I don't know if you can see it very well that that doesn't line up with that one and we've got a gap on this side and it's the same here gap no gap so what's happened is the two 
tubes have moved ever slightly upwards and taken a parallel line as it were with it so I need to put a bead of weld on the underside and bring them back now once I've brought it back these will line in will sit inside the recess here the bearing caps will sit on top of it and then I can weld it without it bending because this solid steel bar shouldn't bend and that's the theory anyway so let's get welding now thankfully I've put enough weld on the axle for everything to line up and now the bar goes all the way through it's these sort of spaces are now held down with the bearing retaining cap with bearing caps and when we look at the other side you can see that's not gonna move and that's not gonna move it can still slide so it's not completely tight Ooh, clearly So now I'm going to put the back cover back on and I can start doing the brackets properly. Okay, so here we are with the axle. I've now welded the brackets on. They're strong as hell. That bolt there is just a breather. I've just plugged the hole so I didn't get it down the inside the axle. Um, yeah. Quite pleased, looks pretty strong. Don't feel good. And if I rotate this, I can feel it's stiffer than what it was, so it's definitely resisting the warpage. Um, yeah, I've also ground off the underside where the other work and that straightened the axle. So, yeah, really, really happy with that. So, next job is this here this is the axle strap so when you jack the car up uh, a rubber or sort of nylon strap stops the axle from falling too far um, this is snapped on the stud it's quite common you can buy this piece about six quid I've already ordered it so that'll be coming this week now I, over here somewhere in all this mess I've got too much stuff in this garage this is the diff I'm going to remove the crown wheel because I'm not going to be using this one. I'm going to be using this one. Okay, back on the differential again. This here is the actual strap that needs to be replaced, and my replacement has come. So I've got to cut that off and weld this in its place. Fun. So, there it is what I done. It just needs, I'll probably give it a bit of a tidy up and I'll probably tack weld that washer on as well so it's moving around. But, easy as that. Okay, now it's time to disassemble the differential unit. Okay, so here's the diff unit. What I need to do is remove the two, four, six, eight bolts that hold the crown wheel in place. Hopefully, no, I've got a feeling it's going to be very tight.
couple bucks. Bollocks. Oh, no. So, I need to come up with something. I think I'm going to have to put this carrier section here in the soft jaws of my vice and hope that it works out. Okay. Uh, let's remember that one goes in that one. So I'm not going to be getting rid of this diff. It's, um, I'll be using a different one, but I'll keep this one. Okay, so I've got it in the soft jaws of the vice. Right, let's see if we can undo these bolts. Jesus. Right, lift that off, here it is, this is the carrier, looks pretty good, so now this, along with all of its parts, goes back together and I'll pop that in a bag now. Okay, so the diff's all wrapped up now and put away. And now, it's time to get out the new diff. There it is. Now I'm just gonna zoom out with the camera. Okay. So, i a craft diff. Hopefully this will all fit together nicely. Pretty good. Mind you, to be fair, I don't really know what it's supposed to look like. It's my first play. Uh, I'm cleaning everything up, make sure it's two mating surfaces are all free. It's a nice bit of machine. Nice, put that there. And then, what should happen is this should go over the top and it does now there's ever so slight amount of play with that and we'll need to deal with that it's called run out if you've got too much of it or indeed any it's bad so I'm just going to pop the first couple of bolts on just to hold and the uh, to hold the crown wheel up so it doesn't fall when I tighten it. Judging by the amount of oil on these bolts, I'm guessing these are oiled, but there's still tons on them, so I'll just put them in this area.
Very nice. Okay. Only a trial sort of fit. I just want to check that everything goes together nicely and I'll disassemble it and do it the same manner which it says in the manual. But so far, so good. To be continued. Okay, so we're over at the press, so we're going to press the bearings onto the diff. I'm using Timken bearings. It says, do not remove bearing until ready for assembly. And now I am. So, let me take it out. You have the outer race. I'm going to put that to one side because we're not going to be using that just yet. Come there, safe. And it's important to put. It's important to put these in the right way. They've got to go that way. If I put them in face down, then the race can't go on. All right, so that sits onto there. And then I need an adapter or something that will just to try not to touch the rollers. The correct diameter for that, that's Pretty close. Okay, ready to go again. Let's see. Now I had a problem when I put the first bearing in. You can see on here, there's a ridge on the inside. There's also a ridge on here. And the problem you get is when you press this down, this hits this and it can't go down any further. So I had to make this on my lathe, which allows this to push down just that little bit further. It's only about two millimeters, but it's enough to make all the difference. So. Go again, other side. Now, these races are matched to each bearing. So you have to label them. So this is the crown wheel side. So I'm just gonna put C, W with a Sharpie. See, that's crown wheel. I've already labeled the other one that's in that box. So, next job, open up the diff. Open up the uh, axle casing, I should say, and see if it fits. Okay, so I've managed to drop the differential in. As you may be able to see, there's a spacer here and a spacer here. And the idea of the spacers is to bring the crown wheel further in and out towards the pinion down there. So the further away it is, the more of this you'll get. I think this is more than six thou, so I think it's looser than what it was. So I need to adjust the spacers here to bring 
this this way so we have less play that'll be fun now I don't know if I've just got lucky but moving the crown wheel oops wrong way I'm getting about five and a half thou maybe just slightly over and the spec on this is six thou I'm pretty sure I've got it set up right so I'd say I don't need any additional spaces I bolted it down as well rather than having it sort of loose and yeah I'm happy with that Okay, now what I've done here is I'm just measuring uh, whether or not the crown wheel is perfectly centred. So progressively I'll have to undo these bolts and tighten them as I go along. But at the moment it's showing to be, oh, there's a mark on there I think, about 5,000 total out which is far too much. So I have to, this is a long, boring task, but I'm gonna have to undo each bolt, give it a little tap, slightly tighten them, check it again, and do it over and over and over until it's right. Oh joys! So I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, diff's all in. Everything's torqued up, 65 foot-pounds on these four and 65 foot-pounds again on the eight uh, crown wheel bolts. Next up, I'm going to put some uh, blue contact paint onto the gears and just check that the mesh is good. And after that, half shafts and we're nearly there. Okay, looking at one side, if I can get the light in there. Looks like it's got pretty good contact. It's pretty central. It's not offset to one side for or after or yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. So now it's got to test the other side. So do the other side. I'll film this one. Um you gotta put tension onto this so that the two gears mesh nicely. So I'm just gonna go the other way. Right, so back this way. And I'll put tension on it. Yeah, we did. That again also looks pretty good. Can't see anything wrong with that. Uh, all that's left, clean up. I'm going to clean off this gasket, put a new gasket on. Uh, actually, no, that's a lie. Half shafts next. Mm. Right, the half shafts are in, sort of. When you pass, you put them in. They're really tight fit. I don't mean this side either. They're really tight inside the diff as well. Um, on the old diff, they just slid in. Um, but with this one, I've got to give it a bit of a tap. So I'll be tapping these bearings in. Um, yeah. The, uh, I just have to keep bashing it with a hammer on the outside section until the sound changes. Where's my fin hammer?
Right. Quay. Right. So I've just screwed in the caps very gently. So now I'm going to torque them to 65 foot pounds. One. Set up my indicator. So I can get. I don't know if you can see it very well, but we're getting eleven thou of play before it was six. Before the diff went back to quay for rework, so something's changed. So what I'm gonna? I know it's closer to twelve actually. Eleven and a half. So I'm gonna take it back out again. And I'm going to swap over the spacers that are on either side, um, which brings the diff further this way and that way. So at the moment, the diff seems to be too far away. So I'm going to, hopefully by swapping the shims over, it will bring it this way. But we'll see. Okay, I just swapped the shims over, and I could tell by looking at them that the thicknesses were quite a lot different. And now if I zero this, you can see it's a lot less movement, a lot less. So we're looking at about five thou. The spec on this is six. Um, I suspect it's actually probably more. It's just that because of the angle of this and the setup, but it is noticeably twice as good. So I'm happy with that. I'm now going to remove the bearings, oil them, and put it all back together again, and recheck again. I've already checked the, um, the contact area of the gears with the blue gunk. Oh, and it, was, it was perfect, so I'm, no doubt it, has, it hasn't changed again. I think with the reason this had changed in terms of the backlash from before was that I probably put, well, I know I did. The spacers here were the wrong way around, so good job we checked. Ah. <coughs> yeah, it's nice. Isn't it? uh, there's always gonna, you always have to have some backlash. The oil will take up a lot of it. Speaking of which. In. Now I can feel there's, you can't even feel the backlash now, you're always taking up a lot of the space, so you, you, you can't even feel it on a dry, you have to test it on a dry diff, not a, one with oil on it. Right, half shafts next. This is where it all went wrong last time. The spines that go in the two side halves were wrong on the diff. Basically something to do with the heat treatment. So as you heat, as you heat metal it expands and, and depending on how fast you cool it, it depend on how much it contracts and it contracted too much and my half shafts wouldn't fit. So I've got a big apology. I took the diff back and three months later here it is. But they took everything, they took the half shafts, everything was assembled on here, so this hasn't been removed. Um, so I've kept it on there and I've not touched it. Um, where's my sodding knife? Oh, I put one thing down. 
did not find the bastard. Yeah, basically this is my garage at the moment. That's the half shafts. That's the car. I can't push the car out because it's raining. We probably can't tell from here. It's a really fine rain. Um, the car goes in to the body shop in about, about a week, two weeks time. Um, yeah, my garage is absolutely ramo and stuff. So I'm having to work on the floor very carefully. So half shafts next. Half shafts of the MGBs are bloody big. Very big, very heavy. So this is a brand new bearing that's been pressed on. So it's a little roll, just gonna check it's clean. I'm just gonna put a drop of oil on it as well actually. There's the oil, oh for fuck's sake. So, dab of oil. Maybe a little bit, just enough to happy. Spin it around. So, moment of truth. Will it fit? Looks good. I need to tap that in. Keep going until the noise changes. Oh. By keeping my finger on the side, I can feel it still moving in. So now it's gone for a much more metallic. Sort of sound. I can't feel. Yeah, it's solid. That's done. All right, other side. Now, I don't have a bearing on this one, but here's one I purchased earlier. If I put the bearing on. Put this collar on. What this collar does is it slides over the half shaft. Now you might think, well, why didn't they just machine it to suit? If you look carefully, it's rounded, and that makes it stronger. If you've got sharp edges, like 90 degree angles, it creates a weak point. So by having, having it tapered or rounded on the machined area here, it gives it strength. So that goes on. Oh, come on, you bastards, come out of the bag. Now, usually these are press on, but this one sort of slides on. But, ooh, bearing feels tight, as in when it turns, it should be okay. It's brand new, made in Korea. I was hoping for an SKF German or British bearing, but alas, no. But the new bearings on a dish carrier Oh. So 
this. We normally house the breather. Cheers. This on there. But before I put it on, I'm going to put some Loctite on. Okay, there's our Loctite. that ceiling on the vice. This, this is the oil seal. Nice and easy. And that slips on like that. The bolts on. A bit right around. around. Bolts on. And then do the same on the other side. I'll bolt, bolt this on later because I've got something else in mind to go on there as well. I'm just going to do the other side quickly because I've got another one to do. Okay, it's an update for the rear axle for the MGB. Um, yeah, it's pretty much finished now. I've made the brackets now for the rear disc conversion. Um, they don't look very pretty, but I'll neaten them up and paint them up before it goes on the car. So for this I'm using a Volvo V40 around 1998 year 2 litre petrol uh, discs, they're really cheap, um, and MGF calipers. Um, eventually I'll go to Willwood like the fronts, but for now this will work. So the diff's in, the Quaver differential, it's, uh, I haven't finished bolting it all down fully, um, but I'll do that when it goes in the car. Um, so I, to, I think I ran out of bolts, I need to buy some more. Um, it's all painted up uh, and also have a new breather on there as well. Um, so yeah, it's all ready to go. Finally. Oh yeah, I haven't got the disc and the uh, bracket on that side yet, I just haven't had time. Um, but you get the gist. <laughs> 